Hello again, um, just thought I'd do a quick update on the printer's progress. It's 24 hours later and this is what we're looking at. One completed printer. Uh, I haven't gone ahead and, and installed any software or to drive the motors. I have plugged in, turned it on, didn't let the smoke out, which is always a bonus. Um, just thought I'd go through a couple of little issues that I had with the build process, so hopefully you guys can uh, miss out on those couple of issues and we'll go from there. So to get it to this stage, it took me around about six hours over a 24 hour period. I've got tied up in the machine. Um, probably one of the worst parts about the whole build was, if you look deep inside here, there is a metal plate that holds the E3D um, head in place. Um, it didn't fit, it didn't fit at all. Um, and it cost me about 45 minutes to an hour filing, taking it apart, trialing, filing, taking it apart, trialing. I did want to get a nice snug fit, that's why I didn't just attack it with an angle grinder. But um, yeah, that was quite annoying. Um, so anyway, that's done. Um, while I'm also looking at the, the head, a um, couple other things um, that we might see here. Through the build video process, it tells you to tighten these four screws up. Um, and then it tells you untighten them, so just don't tighten these all the way up, put them in to start with. Once you put the assembly together, um, then go ahead and snug these bolts back up, probably save you two or three minutes on the way through. Something else, these little brackets here, uh, in the build video, this fan is mounted straight up here. Um, so I guess the guys at 3D Printer Online have built these. These are probably some of the worst printed parts I've ever seen. Uh, it didn't fit at all, had to file those again, um, incredibly bent, badly designed, um, and realistically that's not going to cool the, the heat, uh, the, the extruder particularly well. Um, so that's probably going to be the first thing I tackle with a printer, is a, a much better head. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll just jump on Thingiverse and download it, someone else's design, or jump on Cubify and uh, smash out something a little bit better. So, a um, couple of gribbles in there. Um, something else I was a little concerned with was the acrylic frame. Um, I did manage to crack it um, through the very first part of the build. Ten minutes in, I was attaching this stepper motor to this uh, assembly. I put it down to the bench to grab another screw, and the whole assembly fell on the floor. Just literally tumbled off the floor and got a crack um, in it. So, I'm not quite sure if you can see it. I don't think it's going to affect the performance. I was lucky enough that with this assembly, I epoxied the whole thing together. It doesn't flex. You can hardly see it. It does annoy me, um, but it is quite brittle. So it was something I was a little concerned of. Um, something else with the acrylic, you might be able to see in the, here. With these, as you're putting everything together, there's these little T-slots in the acrylic and uh, you put a little M3 nut in there and then M3 bolt goes through. Um, they are so close to bottoming out, it's crazy. Um, all over my frame I've got these tiny, tiny little hair fractures. I'm hoping it doesn't get any further or get any worse. And um, yeah, so time's going to sell there, but um, frame, incredibly rigid. There's no flex, so I think all in all the acrylic wasn't too bad. Um, what else have we got? Um, something else that does annoy me a little bit is the end stop. We've got an absolute beautiful uh, adjustable height end stop here on this carriage. But then it goes down to this, which is only held on with one bolt. Um, not quite sure why they did that. That would be quite easy to put a second bolt in it. Um, I'm thinking this is going to be something that's going to have a chance of of wiggling and uh, and not being particularly precise so um, that is a little bit of a letdown and I don't really feel comfortable uh, drilling holes in the acrylic uh, I know I could run a screwdriver back a screw backwards and probably not chip it but I probably won't do that I may end up re-engineering something off the uh, off the stepper motor mounts here um, to mount the end switch so that's another problem that I did have um, a couple other things uh, with the build video sequence. Um, build video sequence was absolutely fantastic. Couldn't fault it um, until it came to the wiring at the end. Literally, the guy just shows you plugging wires into the board. Doesn't show what to do, where each wire has come from. It's just a matter of him plugging wires in. 
something that was also omitted um, was this. There's absolutely no mention of this at all in the whole thing. These are little heat sinks um, for the back of the stepper motors so they don't get hot and fry out. Um, so it's going to be really, really important before I do start printing and, and moving the axes around that I do attach those. Um, that's not mentioned anywhere in the whole video sequence. So um, just be careful of that. Um, something else they have included, but I will end up having to redo, is the spool holders. Um, not a great design. They tend to catch as you run the spool over them. It's nice that they gave us some bearings for it. Um, but um, I'm sure we can do something a little bit better than this. And um, yeah, it is going to be good because we will have some spares, bearings for here if these ever do fail. So um, not that it's particularly bad, but it could have just been a little bit better. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, also, the LCD board, which is a top of the machine. I'm not quite sure if you should see it. You should be able to see this. It's only held by two bolts at the very, very bottom of the PCB. Not bad. It's quite rock solid. Apart from the fact that there's no way of bracing right behind the knob. You have to push this all the time. So, this is what happens. I'm sure that PCB isn't going to last particularly long if I continually flex it that way. So that's something I'll also be attacking is uh, a new case for this so that doesn't happen. Um, one other thing, uh, we did have a little bit of drama on the way through. Not particularly a drama, but there's a lot of cables and things on the inside. It would have been very, very simple to have put a few holes through here so I could actually attach some cable ties. Um, and, uh, and just you know, have tied it all up and make sure that as the carriages are moving backwards or forwards, um, we don't have any dramas with snagging anything or getting caught or getting broken or going from there. Um, something else that the only thing I've had to supply for the whole kit was an Australian plug. Um, basically, I just cut the cable off something and attached it to this, so that was okay. My major gripe with the whole printer so far is the heat bed. Um, I'm a little concerned this may not work particularly well for me. Um, in this direction, absolutely perfectly flat. I railed some of the, um, the linear rods across the surface before I put it together. Absolutely perfectly flat. But in this direction here, um, I ran some feeler gauges underneath, about half a mil um, bowed. So it's high here, high there. In the middle, I know half a mil doesn't sound like much, but that's going to be two layers. So I may have some problems with either bowing or adhesion or not being able to print to the whole surface. Um, and one other thing is I measured the resistance of the bed and the resistance is around about one and a half ohms. I'd much rather see it as close to one ohms as possible. Um, depending on what happens, I may have to crank the voltage up on the power supply to try and generate some more heat into the bed. Um, that may really impact the quality of the print uh, and it might be something I need to talk to Sun Hokey about maybe trying to get sorted under warranty. So I guess we'll get to test their 12 month warranty from there. So um, all in all, kit went together incredibly well. Certainly very, very happy with the quality of the kit. Um, would highly, highly recommend it to anybody else. Um, and hopefully a couple of those little issues that I've gone through um, will help everybody else out. I'll do another video after I've gone ahead and installed all the software and um, let you know if there's any dramas that I have um, with the software install and you know getting the slicer program done and, and calibration. Thanks for watching.